uh, the second talk of the afternoon session. Thank you for coming for the last talk of today. So I'm going to talk about my results on new lower bounds and generalization for ACC0 and a generalization centric view on the algorithmic method. So here's the plan for today's talk. So first I will review some background. Uh, oh, can you hear me by the way? Is that good? Uh, and also feel free to inter interrupt me if you have any questions. So first, I will reveal some background on circuit level bounds and the algorithmic method. And then I will describe my results. Uh, it's a, a generalization-centric perspective on the algorithmic method, and also some new results, which can be proved following this perspective. And finally, I, I will give some proof overview. So let's get started. So, so here is a oversimplified history and motivation for studying circuit level bounds. So since, since the 1980s, people wanted to prove NP is not equal to NP. We are proving lower bounds for stronger and stronger circuit classes. And the, the first thing people look at is constant depth circuits. And the people first studied AC0, which is constant depths and or not circuits of unbounded fanning. And a very important enough work proved that, the for example, the parity function is hard for AC0. So now we have very good lower bounds for AC0. Then the, the natural next step to do is to strengthen the circuit class. For example, you can add parity, the hard function, back into the circuit class. So now parity becomes trivial. So now, but now, now you get AC0 too. So the question becomes, can you prove lower bounds against AC0 too? Another lab work proved that, for example, the, the most three function is hard for AC0 too, using the, using the polynomial method. And the first lower bound is proved by random restriction type of um, type method. And uh, what's, mo mo what's mod three? Uh, mod three for, for any integer p, mod p is the function which outputs one if and only if P does not divide the number of ones in the input. Does not. So if it's more two, it's, it's, it's parity. And uh, of course, the next logical thing to do is you add mod three to the, to the gate set. Now you have a class called AC06. Uh, it, why, why, why is AC06? It's because having mod six is equivalent to having both mod three and mod two. You can compute mod two and mod three by padding mod six and vice versa. Uh, so now we have AC, now we arrive at AC zero six, which seems I mean it's very natural to add a gate get that to the to the to the previous classes, and uh, it seems to them be much stronger than AC zero two, uh, but unfortunately it has been open for two decades, whether even an X. A gigantic class, which is non-deterministic exponential time, contains a function that, that cannot be computed by even polynomial size step three is those six circuits. So progress basically stopped it, uh, here for a long time until so in 2011, uh, Williams, who is, who is there, I guess. <laughs> so he proved that NX does not have polynomial size is those circuits. And uh, so, okay, what's AC0? So we use AC0M, so just like AC06 and AC02, we use, use AC0M to denote constant depths and or not mod M circuits. And AC0 is simply the union of AC0M for all constant M. So you first fix a constant, and then you can use the mod M gate. So, so, so there's some subsequent, subsequent work following Williams' breakthrough. So, so in 2018, Murray and Williams proved that NQP, which is non-deterministic quasi-polynomial time. So this one is much smaller than NX. So it's much closer to, to NP. Does not have polynomial size as those well circuits. And later, uh, I and uh, Henning, I think who is here, we, we strengthen the lower bound to the average case, proving that NQP 
cannot be half plus one over polynomial approximated by polynomial size at a lower circuit. And uh, so by approximate, I mean over the uniform distribution. So later, uh, I and the uh, and Shin and uh, Williams and Ryan, we proved that uh, e to the NP cannot be half plus Oh, things here, right? So we, we prove that e to the NP cannot be half plus uh, inverse sub exponentially approximated by sub exponential size as a lower circuit for all sufficiently large input densities. So it's almost everywhere lower. So in this talk, I will try to give alternative proofs of this worst case and, and the average case results. And also, I'll, I'll, I'll show some new theorems. So uh, first, let me say something about William's original proof. Uh, it's kind of indirect in the sense that it's essentially a proof by contradiction. So a very, very rough summary goes as follows. You first, you assume the, the lower bound is false. Like you assume Nx is containing SA0. Then you try to use that together with some non-trivial algorithms to contradict the end time hierarchy. Uh, of course, this is like very, very rough. You can see the see Williams' original paper or like the the summary in my in my like edited paper for like more information. Or you can ask uh, right here. <laughs> so our motivation is here is can we have a more direct proof? So of course, it's uh, hard to define what it means by direct. But uh, intuitively, you want to like avoid the proof by contradiction and the uh, and the. Uh, so yeah, essentially you have to avoid like win-win style argument or proof by contradiction. Yeah, and the hope is just that the the new proof can be like a easier, a bit easier to 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 follow to to understand. Yeah. So so we are so now let's move to the uh our, our new result, a randomization centric perspective on the algorithmic method. Uh, any questions? So here is our roadmap for proving NQP is not in S0. Uh, it's on. So first, we'll show a lower bound for a certain subclass of Merlin Arthur. So I'll define Merlin Arthur uh, in a few slides against S0. So this is an unconditional, unconditional lower bound saying like a subclass of Merlin Arthur is harder for S0. Next, I will just de-randomize this subclass into NQP. So now the harder language uh, goes to NQP. Then we have the NQP not in SA0 lower bound. Yeah, that's that's the that's the two-step plan for proving NQP not in SA0. Of course, this has some some uh, some technical details. So, but let me try to explain the both of them. Um, is this clear? Um, uh, uh, for the, you have an advice. Yeah. Yeah. I think for promise version is fine. Yeah. But, uh, it's also like one bit of advice. Yeah. yeah I'm trying to hide that. <laughs> so, uh, so, okay. Let's, let's, so the first step is that, okay. Of course, I, I need to recall what's the MA. So MA is a, a randomized version of NP. I say a randomized version because you can also think about AM, but the AM is much harder to, much harder to de-randomize. So we are going to focus on MA. So uh, we say a language L is in MA if there is a polynomial time uniform algorithm V, V stands for verifier such that, so given an input X, V will get some witness Y and toss some coins. And if X is in the input, then that exists a proof of witness such that V is going to accept that with high probability over its randomness. And if X is not in L, then for every possible proof, it's going to be rejected, with probability more than two thirds. And uh, as you can see, if that's no, no coins R, then this is essentially, then this is just MP, right? So this is the definition of MA. And then we are going to define a subclass of MA by looking at the verifier complexity. 
So we, we, we define MA sub C. So C is as a class of uh, a complexity class. I think about like ACC zero or AC zero or like some complexity class. So we say, well, with M, MA sub C to define, to denote the subclass of MA such that the verifier V admits polynomial size potentially non-uniform C circuits. So is this anything clear? I remember your or uh, random uh, uh, Yeah, so as long as you have some universal conditions, that's equivalent. Yeah, we that 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 so if it's zero, well, actually with one bit of advice, I don't know who is that, but uh, I'm trying to, you know, uh, highlight details. So, so this is actually MA with one bit of advice. So MA sub so zero has no n to the k size as zero circuits. So this is the our first result. So this is the subclass. This is the subclass of MA we are going to focus, we are going to be look at. So, so in, this, in this case, the, the basic C zero circuit of the of the very far, okay, size could depend on k, right? Ah, yes, 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 yes. So the, the running time of the MA protocol depend on k. Okay. So you say it's a subclass, but if you allow non-uniform verifiers. Oh, so v is, v is a uniform algorithm, but the condition that v admits polynomial size non-uniform circuits. So, so v must be uniform. So you additionally require that it can be computable by potentially non-uniform C circuits. Yeah, that's uh, yes, it's uh, I think you can also maybe you can just assume it's not, it's uh, it's uniform, it's fine. Like we in, in our paper we already consider the when we had uniform C circuits, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything up here? Okay, so this is the most important definition of the <laughs> Of the of the talk. If you, you understand this, then you'll be fine. <laughs> okay. So next. Oh, now we have a lower bound. What, what do we want to do? Uh, now now we'll, we'll just apply some uh, some previous previous work. So in 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 yeah yeah in Chen Liu and Williams uh, 2020, we proved that this class MA sub A zero is actually contained in infinity often NQP. So in other words, for every L computable by MA sub A0, so MA with A0 verifier, that's another language L prime in non-deterministic quasi-polynomial time, such that for infinitely many N, so this is what IO means. For infinitely many N, L and L prime equals um, equal on um, N bit inputs. So this is an infinitely often generalization. So I actually showed some photo of the authors. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess I look different from those. Uh, <laughs> okay, so so okay, now it's very clear what, what we are going to do next, right? We have the lower bound for MA sub S zero. We have the generalization. We just put them together. So what can go wrong? Uh, combining them together, you should have a you should have a NQP not in zero, but uh, yeah, 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 you are spoiling the slide. Yeah, so yes, yes, uh, that's an infinity of an issue here, right? So if you think about it, you realize so the the first theorem is only uh, of course if only this is almost everywhere, then then, then you are good. But uh, it's very hard to prove almost everywhere logon for MA. So the theorem one only says this L is hard on infinitely many n. And the generalization here also only says the generalization only works on infinitely many n. And uh, these two results don't talk to each other. So it's very likely they are not going to help, not going to agree on the same. So it's very likely these two sets, although both of them are infinite, they have no, no intersection, right? And in that case, yeah, yeah, you actually have nothing. So for example, this L prime can be something like 
on those n, which which is that, that do, do not agree with L, it's just empty. Then, then, then maybe you only have empty language at the end. So you so that, that's the problem. So what if the the dimension only works for those input lenses where your language L in MA space zero is not hard? Uh, any question regarding this issue? What, what is the uh, <clears throat> on the right hand side? Mm. This is basically theorem one, but with some. Uh, what, is, what is your name? This one? Yeah. Oh, uh, a theorem one is this one, right? Yeah, but why did you discuss uh, the, the right hand side? This is a restriction that you fix. Okay. Uh, I don't understand the question. Can I repeat the question? So I'm saying that so PI is, it says that it says that the generation condition, right? So for every L in M is zero, that's another language L prime in entropy, such that L and L prime agrees on infinitely many input lenses. That's that's the that's the that's the statement M is zero is in IO entropy means, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. So, Zero and MA. Uh, what was the question? How so, different are they? they? I mean, do you expect them? Are they, is there any reason to think that they're not equal? I actually, I mean, in the ground truth, they should be equal. I think they're both equal to MT. But uh, you need to have very strong PRG to show that. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, so okay. in the ground truth, MA is sub, uh, I think even MA is sub. sub uh, the NF, sub, uh, sub uh, DNF, sub, sub yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's sub CNF, probably. Yeah, yeah, because for MP, you can always make the verifier to be a CNF or like some even yeah, CNF. And uh, so here, the problem is you cannot de randomize. If, if you can show MA, MA equals MP, then of course MA sub SA0 also equals MP, and then it's a the verify can be just made to be like a straight and yeah. yeah. The question is why, like, how high is that to, how high is it to prove them? Yeah. So let's do, just ignore the right hand side, just concentrate on this and that's it. Don't worry about it. Uh, Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so the yeah, 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 that's actually how the proof will, will go. Like, you want to. <laughs> you have to and, uh, you have, okay, so, okay, so the day you have this meeting up, you should what, what, what you do. You have to focus on this thing. You have to try to make this larger. And uh, that, so following Murray's and Williams, that's actually a way to strengthen theorem one here so that the hard input lenses and the the randomizable input lenses, these two sets have an infinite size intersection. Uh, I'm not going to explain this because it's pretty technical, but uh, the, the idea is that although you cannot make it almost everywhere, you can make it almost, almost everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, that's the, that's the uh, name invented by Murray and Williams. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, so, so I mean, like uh, forgetting about this technical issue, we we have this. Uh, we can we can now prove entropy is not in SA zero, because we have we now know that the, the hard language after generalization will still have infinitely many hard input lenses, right? So we have the the lower bound. So, okay, so so this is like the an alternative perspective on the uh, old result. So can we get some new result from this perspective? Sorry, is this a direct proof in your huh? you were asking for a more direct proof? Is it what you're looking for? Or? I think it's the more direct proof. Okay. So can you say something about the proof of uh, sure. So the 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 oh, actually I'm going to talk about it at the end of the talk. So <laughs> but maybe that's the better place to talk about. Because I I I have to define something. Yeah. So okay, so what what can, what new result can can we Proof following this uh, new perspective. So first, uh, Williams actually indeed proved NX has no sub 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 exponential size at those circuits, and we improve it to sub half exponential size. Okay, what does that mean? It means 
uh, you have three of G and it's sub-exponential, <laughs> and you have two of them, which is sub-exponential. So this is an improvement on Williams' original, original NX slogan. But of course, the open question is, can you improve this even further to like sub-exponential? And this is even open for sigma 2x, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so see Williams' talk on this. Yeah. Same questions, we actually get new generalization for ACC0. So recall that the previous work shows MA sub ACC0 is contained in IO NQP. If you think about it as a proof system, it says that a randomized proof system with, a, with an ACC0 verifier can be simulated by a non deterministic proof system with a deterministic verifier with quasi polynomial running time and a quasi polynomial prevalence. Yeah. Open questions for arbitrary circuits. Oh, yeah, yeah. I should have read MA, I think. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you are right. If an MP has like kind of standard open, yes, yes. It should be MA, it should be MA. Yeah, I guess I just want to connect to William's problem. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, it should be MA. And uh, we improve that in a way that we don't, we cannot improve the running time. That's probably too hard. But we improve the witness length. We improve the, the proof length to be polynomial. So but the running time is still quite polynomial. So here, this n time guess denotes the, the subclass of NQP where you only make polynomially many non deterministic guess. So the, that's called n time and a guess. So time and a guess. So we actually, we improve this MA sub AC0 is in IO NQP to MA sub AC0 in IO N time guess, quasi polynomial, polynomial. So this is kind of interesting because you actually get polynomial proof. Although the running time, the, the time to verify that is still quasi polynomial. And why is this interesting? Because this actually can be used to prove new lower bound. So, uh, so recall this is the language decidable by non deterministic machines with running time t and the non determinism bits at most g. We prove that NQP with super polynomial non deterministic bits is strongly average case hard against SA0. So, Write it out n times quasi polynomial n to the alpha n, alpha is any super constant, cannot be half plus one polynomially approximated by a zero circuits. Sorry, what, what is super polynomial non determinism bits? Oh, it just means n time gets to the po to quasi polynomial and the n to the alpha n. So, so here, by n to alpha n, I mean for any like a uh, super constant function r. But the super polynomial non-determinism yeah, yes. So now you have a oh you explain what it is. So I'm saying that now you have a smaller class to which you can prove it all about, right? That's an improvement. So previously the class is NQP, now it has only a subclass of NQP. Because previously the the non-determinism can be quasi polynomial, but now it can be any super polynomial. It could be into the log uh, right. star of it. Yeah, let's say into the log star. Yeah. Right. So this improved on um, previous work by by Nikhil, which he only proves that worst case lower bound, and by also my joint work with Hanlin, which we only proved the strongly average case lower bound against uh, for NQP. And you may already guess how this is proved. Right, because if you look at the theorem three, I mean, the, it's, the, it's, very, it's very clear how do you, it, it may become very clear how do you prove theorem four. So I'll, I'll explain how to prove theorem four. So, so how do we prove, so how do we prove this uh, stronger lower bounds against SA zero? It also clarify like why we want to look at this, this generalization perspective, because so recall we previously we have lower bounds for some for MA for some for some class of MA against a zero, and you generalize that into NQP. 
So to, to make a strongly average case, we simply make a, you, see, you prove our average case of bounds against MA, right? And then after generalization, you have average case of bounds. I mean, because the animation keep the, keep the language. And to, to make this NQP smaller, what you do is very simple. Just, just plug in the better generalization. So now, now it becomes into the super normal is because previously the lower bound is like a fixed, fixed polynomial lower bound. You need, need to look for n, n to k for every k. So the generalization becomes into the, some, some, some super polynomial 90 million bits. So essentially, I'm saying that this, this perspective is kind of sharper in the sense that if you improve the MA lower bound, you get better, you, get, you, you, get, you directly get better lower bound. If you improve the generalization, you also get better lower bound. Anything, any question? How many, how many time do I have? Oh. <laughs> And so let me now move to the proof. Proof overview, actually. So uh, first, I will I will try to talk about my how do we prove the new improved lower bound for n x against S A zero. Or you can think, you can view it as a randomization centric proof of the of n x, uh, not in S A zero. So what I want to show I want to show n x has no sub half exponential size as a zero, as a zero circuit. And uh, this weird notion means you compose G twice, it's sub exponential. And uh, we are going to make use of the previous generalization. As uh, we know MA sub SA zero is in non is a IO NQP, non-terminated quasi polynomial time. Okay. And you now you, you, you do a simple padding. You will just pad this MA to like a sub exponential. And then the NQP just become NX because uh, it's qu quasi polynomial of sub exponential is uh, actually still sub exponential. But uh, I'll just write NX. So, so is this clear? It's a very simple padding argument. But now, now we have the generalization. What you want to do is actually, I guess you, so what you want to do is to get a lower bound for, for this class, for the left class. Then you try to get a lower bound for the right class. So first we start with a very simple diagonalization. It says two to the g of n time is not in infinity often g of n size. Uh, there may be some like polynomial here, but uh, I'm just trying to make things simple, simple to, to write. Uh, so G is again sub exponential. So it, this is proved by you, you enumerate every possible job and size circuit. It's probably like two to the job and square, but uh, yeah. The key lemma here states that assuming E has G of n size SA0 circuit, then E is contained in MA time SA0 verifier G of n. So here, the, it means that the verifier runs in G of n time, and the, the verifier can be implemented by G of n size as a zero circuit. It's a key lemma. OK, uh, um, if you have a key lemma, actually, the proof just, just follow very easily. So, so you just do a padding. So this means to the n time is in MA time as a zero G of n, and now you by padding, you actually, it actually means you replace this, this n with the red n here by g of n. So now you get time to the g of n is contained in ma time is a little g of g of n. This is the exponential. Actually, can you see the pointer? I don't know. Okay. I can't see the pointer. Okay. Okay, good, good, it's good now. Yeah, it's good. Well, it doesn't work very well. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, okay, so now you have the, so just combine this diagonalization and this padding argument, you, what you, what you get, you have MA sub SA0 
at spectral time, it's not in infinite of a job n size, right? Because the now you have time to do a job n is in is contained in m a g of job n, and also and another job g of g of g of n is like exponential. And also, we previously we can derandomize this class into infinite of an x. Now you put them together, what you get? You get an x is not in size job n. So I, I, I crucially, you need that almost everywhere lower bound here. So this language is always hard. So even if you, you only have an infinite of generalization, the result you get is still hard. And this essentially follows IKW. Um, yeah. But you need to use a, like a, some like a, it's a refined version of the IKW argument. Yeah. So in conclusion, look at the key lemma. It assumes E has job n size instead of those circuits. So in conclusion, either E has no job n size instead of those circuits, which means we are good, we have the lower bound, or uh, NX is not in which is actually stronger. So I mean, but, but the, in both cases, we, ha we have the lower bound we want. And actually it's not in J of N size, I say zero. Uh, hmm? Yeah. So here like the MA lower bound is a proper almost always lower bound, right? Yes. Uh, compared to the MA lower bounds in other proofs, this is like a stronger because it's almost so. so uh, you paying because it's exponential? It's also conditional. You're assuming E has a job inside of the circuit. Uh, but that's actually, that's the crucial thing. So this is not direct. This is a proof of contribution. Yeah. So it's a conditional and a lower bound. Yes. So yeah, if you look at these two conditions here, like these two are actually fixed together. That's, that's very crucial. OK, that's uh, okay, one slide proof. Uh, okay, I still need to prove the key lemma, of course. So how do I prove the key lemma? So you assume E has J of N size as those circuits. You want to show G can be simulated by MA time as a zero uh, J of N. So the proof is actually very simple. What, what, what do you do? First, you, we, we, we take a very efficient PCP with an as a zero verifier the Ben Sasson and the Biola 14 paper. And we apply this to some language in E. Next, this statement, E has J of N size as a little circuit, actually already implies that whenever X is in the language L, L is in E, that's a PCP witness that has G of X size as a little, as a little circuit. So how do you prove this? So the idea is that so for this language L, you construct a different language L prime such that on input X and I, you output the I, the I speed of the PCP witness for X. That, that, that language is also in E. So you can, you can apply this condition. Oh, is this clear? Is this clear? Um, so now, if you look at this second condition, it says, Whenever x is whenever there, whenever x is in L, that's a very short, very small G of, G of n size of the circuit for the witness. So the, the MA algorithm is very simple. You give an input, you guess a PCP proof of a small circuit, a zero circuit. You run a, you run the a zero verifier. That's the language. That's the that's the, oh, this job fan should be poly job fan, but that doesn't, doesn't really matter. That's the. Uh, hmm? The proof is an ACC is zero and the verifier is an AC zero. And then the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So the verifier complexity is very simple. You just come, you, you run the, the PCT verifier, which is in AC zero, and the, the verifier calls the, 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 the AC zero circuit so you guess. The overall complexity is just at a zero. Does this require anything special about the uniformity of the AC zero verifier? Uh, 
It is uniform. It is uniform. I think it's yeah, Darwin needs to be P uniform. uniform. Darwin needs to be P uniform. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Oh, actually, you, it doesn't need to be uniform. As long as you have a, you have a, it, it, it's, it's okay. You, you have a like a p very p time verifier, and it's only implementable by non-uniform little circuit. But you, you don't know. That's actually fine. But uh, I mean, it, it's not very important to know. So. So uh, if I understand correctly, is a witness that is computable by a small CCR circuit. But why? Oh, so okay. The, the idea is uh, like this. So, uh, so now we have this language L is in E. You, you define a new language L prime. L prime that L prime, L prime takes two inputs. The first is x, x is an input to L. Second is i, i points to a position in the PCT witness. And uh, now, so this, I claim this new language L prime is also in E. Why? Because if I take an input x to L, you, you will, in, in experimental time, I can decide whether x is in L. That is not in L, then I just don't do anything. That is in L, I run some. PCT construction to find that PCT witness. Then I output its S bit. So, and the input length to the L prime is X and I, I is of O N bit because the PCT proof is of exponential size. So the overall thing is still in E. And then you use this condition. Just L prime is in, L prime has small circuit. Then you just, then it implies the, this statement. Yeah, there might be a big old inside of the G or something. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to make it. Yeah, of course, I can write a very, very, like, like, uh, like a rigorously, but that would be a pain to look at. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 that, that's some, like, a, this is, this is probably, that's some, this should probably be G of, G of 3x, I guess. You can do, you can do a 3 here. Yeah, but I mean, anyway, that's some minor detail. Hmm? This, for this slide, yeah. the, the function G. No, no, no. Uh, okay, G, G needs to be a, a reasonable function, like uh, increasing time computable. That's it. Be at least polynomial. Yeah, it needs to be at least polynomial because otherwise the combo, the, 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 this may not work. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so this this lemma does not require G to be sub exponential. The, the only thing which requires G to be sub exponential is here. Because you want this to be to be uh, contained in the, the thing you can de-randomize. But uh, this requires G to be sub exponential. Yeah. So the key lemma is it, it works for any renewable G, yes. And also it works for any renewable C class. And then, uh, the only thing you say is zero is about is that here this is true. Like if it's like T zero, like NZ1, it's fine. Yes. How many minutes do I have? 15? OK. OK, now let me try to, uh, by the way, any question? I mean, before I move to the uh, uh, disaster, some, something else. OK. So now I'm, going, now I'm trying to explain uh, the, so I think Tony's question, like it's trying to explain how do you prove this theorem? Uh, for, so actually, I'll prove something uh, more ge general. I'll show for, for most of class C, C can be anything like uh, we have for every constant K, MA sub A C zero two of C has no n to the K size C circuit. So if C is A C zero, then the A C zero two has a top down matter. So you, 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 get, you get what you want. And then why is A C zero two? I'll try to explain. But before that, I'll, what is SL2 of C? It's a, a, you have a top SL2 circuit and whose inputs are outputs of a layer of C sub-circuits. So you have a SL2 at the top and uh, you, you, it calls many C sub-functions at the bottom. So 
previous a uh, previous work in which is implicit in uh uh like nine twenty nine ninety five of mine shows that shows the same thing except that this is the two is t zero. So our goal here is trying to I thought t zero is is too is uh, too large for us if we want s zero. So we need to improve this uh, the, the previous work. But uh, let's recall s zero is constant depth for the number of size circuits consisting entirely of majority gates. Majority is at opposite uh, the majority bit. So, so okay, but so let's recall, like uh, I just review how the previous uh, theorem works and why it's zero. So roughly speaking, the previous paper uses a p-space complete language with a t zero instance checker. So what is an instance checker? <laughs> instance checker is a, so you, you say L is sameness instance checkable if there's a polynomial time oracle machine M such that on input X, you only query M to its, all queries by M to its oracle has length exactly the same length of X. So that's why it's called same length instance checkable. And uh, if, if you are given the correct oracle L sub N, then you output the correct answer with probability one. So M is probabilistic. So L is the restriction of L to input inputs. But for every input X, and for whatever oracle M given to, or given to the M, the output is either the correct one or some like, I, I don't know sign, with probability, with overwhelming probability. And then finally, if we say L is C instance checkable, if M can be implemented by a family of non-adaptive C Oracle circuits. So the previous work gives a um, p-space complete language with a TC0 instance checker. Is the, is the definition clear? So the previous work proves this result by using a p-space complete language that is T0 instance checkable. And uh, let's recall the definition of MA. So, how, so, so okay, I, I need to tell you how the verifier in the defined how the MA language works. So it roughly goes as follows. First, you treat your witness Y as a polynomial size C circuit, C sub Y. Next, you simply run the instance checker with C as an oracle. And uh, okay, okay, actually that's it. That's the, how the that's how the MA language works. And the overall complexity, as you can see, is the instance checker uh, calls the oracle C, which is the T zero of C. So our goal here is to improve the T zero above to A zero two to prove C one. And that's exactly what we did. We, we proved that that's a p space complete language that is a 0 2 instance checkable, a 0 2 downward self reducible, and a 0 2 weakly error correctable. And, and, also, it's, and it's also padable. The, the other three conditions are important for, the, for other stuff, but uh, the most important thing is, is a 0 2 instance checkable. So you plug, we plug in this language above to the into the previous proof, you, you get zero and one. Um, yeah, okay, I, I guess this, this still doesn't say like how the, how the language works. Maybe I should, uh, can, can I write something? So, so maybe the, I mean, let, me, let me say more detail on, on the, how the proof goes. So you have this P space complete language, L. And we know it has an AC02 instance checker. So now you have, now there are like, a, you consider two cases. The first case is that 
this L is actually contained in P slash poly. Okay, okay I'm, I'm following Rahul Sandan's proof, which so we're, I'm not proving the almost 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 everywhere version, which is actually required to resolve the infinity often version. I'm just trying to focus on the verified complexity. So in this case, what does it mean? It means, oh, sorry, I, this should be, this should be L is in A state zero. So if this is the case, what does it mean? It means um, I can, I can actually show MA sub A state zero this space is contained in MA sub A state zero. Why? Because I can, because I know this, this language L is in A state zero. So I can, and it, 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 it has polynomial size A state zero circuit. I can run, I, I can, you know, the, the MA algorithm can guess the unimpedance N, the MA algorithm can guess an SA0 circuit for L sub N and run and run run instance checker. This gives you this. If you look at the definition, this, this, this actually computes L sub N. But in this case, we know that in P space, we can do diagonalization. So of course, uh, MA sub SA0 is not in uh, n to the k size circuits for every k. And uh, this proof crucially uses the fact that the very the instance checker also runs in something lower than a state zero because the overall verifier is going to be the instance checker uh, querying the gas circuit. And now consider the second case. L is not in a state zero. So uh, let's make a simplifying assumption. Let's say, uh, let's say, let's say we want to prove, suppose we want to prove MA A C zero is not in N to the K size A C zero. So let's say the language is computable I, I don't know, n to the k square size a state zero. And not n to the k size a state zero. So in, in this case, what, what, what you can do is very simple. You simply use this, use this circuit to compute the language L. And now the language L not, not, not can put language L in MA sub SA zero. I simply guess the, the, the circuits and then verify and then, then, then compute. So now you, you immediately have MA sub SA zero is not in N to the K side SA zero. So of course this, this simplification is too strong but the idea is that because this is not true, it means uh, there are infinitely many inputs such that L is super, is super phenomenally hard. And for those for those hard inputs, you can, you actually can do, do, do some padding to make it exactly into the k hard, and then you guess and verify, and uh, that's basically the idea. Yeah. Any questions? I guess I, I'm a bit hand waving on, on, on how how it, how it works. Yeah. Uh, you have, that's no question. Um, that's that's the end of my. Uh, what, what new algorithm is needed to get from T0 into the key idea is actually the bottom neck is the polynomial interpolation. Uh, you actually need to, the, the, the most part of the paper is trying to figure out the way to the that several components. 
So it's a bit complicated, but I think the most important thing is to realize that you only need to do polynomial interpolation for constant degree polynomial, which can be done in a 2 if you only work with field of characteristic number two. Yeah. So yeah, so the instant checker runs several things, but the button deck is actually polynomial interpolation. And previous proof that previous proof just call like a TDD polynomial time polynomial interpolation algorithm. But uh, that's a way to to like uh, to modify the language so that you only need to do polynomial interpolation with constant degree polynomial, which can actually be done in, in SDO2 if you work with like a F to the N, let's say. Still have a list of your branches, which they come as a good. Ah, yes. Just curious about if you tried. Uh, so, these low bounds of MA sub C is not an MA sub C. Have you tried like a PSC that's like a full threshold? I mean, I guess this proof method won't work for the thing. If you just see that it's just two thresholds, so uh, MA sub C is not an yeah, the proof doesn't work because uh, actually if you if you have a TV level, you need a very, very efficient instance checker. Preserve TV level too. That's probably very hard. <laughs> so yeah, but if the overhead seems pretty inherent, we, we, we need to do some polynomial interpolation, I think. Or maybe we can try something completely different. With this, this result, uh, just a general result, uh, a general question, did this result work uh, when you try MA one-sided error? Oh, MA can always be made with one-sided error. Oh, that result works with MA, for MA with one-sided error, yes. But, but what you wrote is the two-sided two, two error. Uh, yes, but the... Okay, it works. Yeah, but I, I think so, you, you look at this, like the... Yeah, the complete case probably one. Yeah, that's actually you, you just carry over to that to the to the to the definition to the to the result. I think I always make MA two pair of one-sided error. At least at least preserve the capacity. I guess yes. I'm I'm not convinced. Yeah, that's question. Yes. 